Hey, I know if you are like every other service provider, you are doing your best to get your message out in a powerful way. You want to make sure that you are communicating clearly the value that you bring and you're looking to attract as well as repel the best audience for you, right? You're looking to attract the best people, repel the wrong folks. And we small businesses, micro businesses can get really twisted up in the entire concept of building a strong brand, which is very critical, of course, to positioning and standing out among all of the others who do what they, you know, what you say you do. We may try to distinguish ourselves using snappy language and we think that just like the big brands that we need so many of those same items that we need a slogan we need a tagline we need all those things and while you do want to make sure that you are positioning yourself very clearly and communicating your value using a tagline is often a mistake and i'm going to explain why it's a mistake and what you can do instead. My name's Winnie Anderson. I'm a brand and content strategist. I work with service-based businesses and experts, and I help them stand out. I help them position and pre-sell themselves so they're attracting great potential clients and sell their services faster and easier. And in this video, I want to share with you a uh, I'm going to clear up a mis misperception, a misconception, I should say, and help you get clear on exactly what you can use to help you clearly and quickly distinguish yourself. So let's go ahead and dive in. And of course, I have my two monitors. Those of you who have been on my videos before know I have two monitors here. So I will be glancing back and forth to make sure that everything is working. Please be sure to let me know that my audio is okay. You can hear me, you can see me, and that everything is working. There is a link there that says, please click this link to let StreamYard see your profile. All that does is allow the platform that I use, which is StreamYard, see your name and picture. So instead of Facebook member, I see the actual profile picture and your real name when your comments appear in my dashboard. So of course, ask questions, make comments, and let all of your friends know uh, this information if you feel that it would be of value to them. So feel free to pass this information along. So one of the things that I have been, and of course I have notes down in front of me and notes in front of me as well. So if I'm looking all over, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so one of the things that I've noticed in the last, I'm going to say several months, is a, a, there must be some guru out there talking about this stuff because I've had people come to me or appear in groups and they say things like, I need a tagline. I need a slogan. And I look at their existing marketing and I think that's the last thing you need to worry about. But they are committed. And I was in a group once where the person just could, we were supposed to be working on something for a course. She could not get past this idea that she needed a tagline. And she kept sharing taglines in the group and people were commenting on them. And that is a mistake for another time. Don't, don't do that. Save yourself some time and aggravation. So let me explain what a tagline is and why, why they're not usually very effective and what you really do need and how this thing can help you instead. So a tagline, you're probably familiar with them when you're in the grocery store and you are looking at the boxes of products. There might be a tagline on there. Um, it, it, for example, don't ask me why Smuckers just popped into my head and, it, and that their tagline is with a name like Smuckers, it has to be good. What the heck does that mean? I guess it means that everything they they produce is good. Well, good is kind of in the eye of the taster, right? Although I do love their peanut butter. So it, taglines really historically just don't say a whole heck of a lot. They, the company has spent tens of thousands of dollars. Naming and taglines are really high priced items as our logos, the whole brand identity. But 
usually taglines don't say much. So I want you to tune into when you're watching TV or you're listening to radio or, or Spotify or whatever you're listening to, listen for the commercials and any taglines that are used in there and, and tune in when you're looking at products on the grocery store shelf. The taglines are, you know, they're pretty lame. Taglines are designed to be very short and the theory is that they'll be more memorable. So uh, taglines are, they can often be confused with slogans. They're, the, the name is used interchangeably among, you know, plain old folks. And even though their differences are slight, an example of a slogan or a tagline would be Nike's just do it. You know, now what's, what gets communicated in that? That tagline goes with their famous swoosh and you see it in all of their advertising. And of course, we know because they're an athletic wear company that they're, that is designed, that, that statement is designed to try to motivate you, right? Just do it. Just, just get out there, push yourself harder, achieve great things wearing Nike merchandise, of course, using Nike shoes and Nike products. So that would be an example of a tagline. But let's let's go back and start with what is a brand and then what can really help you continue to communicate what your brand is all about. So a brand, a lot of people think that a brand is the uh, the logo which we used to call the icon, the, the logo, the image that represents the business. So for, you know, you name a, a big company and, and they have a, a, a brand uh, a, or they have, they have a logo. Honda is that funny shaped H. Uh, Acura is the A, which is built out of Honda's H. You have Coke, they have their iconic hourglass bottle. Nike has the swoosh. Those are the logos, right? But that's not what a brand is. It's merely the image that conveys the brand. A brand is really simply your reputation in the marketplace. It's the promise you make and the promise you deliver on. And it's what people say about you when you're not there. So people have brands. Locations have brands, cities have brands, and certainly products and services have brands. You have a reputation in the marketplace that people talk about and say when you're not there. We all have one. The challenge for us is to then build a strong brand that clearly does communicate what we stand for and that we're in alignment with. Right. That's really the essence of what we're trying to do with our with our brands. So we as consumers become brand loyal when that product or service or person or place delivers consistently on its promise. On what it's telling us to do. I remember um, I was making a pie one night years ago and I was going to have a graham cracker crust. So I was having company. I don't usually make pies unless somebody's coming over. So I was having company. I bought a graham cracker crust by Keebler. Easy for me to say. And when I opened it, and you, you've all done this, I opened it. It, was, it wouldn't hold together. It was a sea of crumbs. Obviously, something was wrong. I was so ticked off. I still remember it. Because now here I am going to make this pie. I got people coming over. I can't make this pie and I'm not going to the store again. So that they took a ding, right? I don't know if I've ever bought another pie crust. So once you've, you've worked so hard to build a brand, it doesn't take a lot to damage it. And then the difference is how deep is the crack in that brand and, and that reputation you have? And can you somehow recoup the damage to the brand. We know that when a person breaks, violates their brand, violates our expectations, damages their own personal brand, we're unlikely to trust them again. I used to work <clears throat> at a casino hotel and I had someone violate a confidence of mine, told a secret. 
Uh, that was it. I mean, our whole relationship is built on confidence and trust. You just violated it and you told, you repeated something I told you. So that person's brand reputation with me was permanently damaged. They're still a nice person, but the trust is gone. And really that's the nature of a strong brand. You trust that they are going to deliver on the promise that they're making. So this is why what is actually more effective for you than a tagline is a brand promise. <clears throat> a tagline is simply a snappy phrase. It's a few words. It rarely really provides clarity. What it what it is is it's easy to remember and you know for example Coke's it's the real thing. What does that mean? Right? We don't know but but it's in all their commercials. It's on, you know, it's it's all in the print advertising. It's the real thing. What? So uh, McDonald's loving it. What is that? Right? So it, taglines really don't add a lot of value to having you stand out. And when you are a micro business and especially a service based micro business, standing out and differentiating yourself is critical. You really can't waste time or money, and you certainly can't waste the time of your potential clients. So a, a brand promise is much more powerful. I'm going to look down at my notes here so I can make sure that I, I get this important uh, statement out here. So a brand promise, it helps position you. It helps you grab a piece of real estate in the mind of your audience. That's really what positioning is. It's what the person thinks of when they when they hear you or see you. That's your positioning. It's the real estate you occupy in their mind. It communicates a benefit, the benefit that you bring, the value that you bring. It's based on what you truly deliver and what buyers can expect from you. So it communicates much, much more than just a tagline. So I'll give you some examples. So we talked about the McDonald's and Coke and, and that kind of thing. Uh, other examples of taglines would be like a good neighbor, dot, 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 State Farm is there. What does that really mean to be honest? Are they gonna come and, and take my package off my porch and put it in their house so it's safe? I don't think so, but that's what a good neighbor does, right? Uh, so there's, you know, there's not a whole lot of value, in my opinion, in there. Uh, another insurance one, I've worked with insurance companies in the past, uh, is you're in good hands, right? And I automatically make the little good hands image, which is their part of their logo, right? Their visual identity are the good hands. They're the good hands people. What the heck does that mean? You're in good hands. Yeah, we okay, they're trustworthy. That's what they're trying to say. I got to work too hard to think of that. But it's stuck in our head, right, because of repeated commercials and their uh, music and saying, you know, are, are you and that that great delivery by their spokesperson whose name escapes me. But are you in good hands? Right. Not that powerful. Doesn't really help them stand out. So let's talk about some really great brand promises that have actually been used as sort of taglines in advertising that are now legendary. The one of the absolute best ones that uh, any of us have ever heard when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. We all know that's FedEx, right? And, and FedEx is so powerful. Their name itself became a verb. Can you FedEx this for me? Whether you use it FedEx or not, FedEx became synonymous with overnight delivery. And that's because when you absolutely positively have to have it overnight, you're going to send it by FedEx. So that that's an awesome promise, right? That's a tremendous promise. So you really want to start thinking about what do I consistently deliver and what can I say that I promise to those I serve? Another good one, even though I hate this company, they make me insane, but they really do have a great brand promise. And that is we customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Notice it's incredibly long, but it's clear. It's at the end of every Liberty Mutual commercial. 
We customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. That speaks directly to their particular buyer. Doesn't attract me, but the, it works, right? They, they, ha they have commercials out all the time and they're consistent in that message. Of course, they also are saying something that just every insurance company actually will give you what you need, but this is another important piece about a brand promise. You're saying something that other people are not saying, but it's true, right? So they decided, and, and you know, how are you going to differentiate yourself when you're an insurance company? They found a, a spot and they stuck their, their flag in the, the sand and said, this is us. This is how we're going to make it so people remember us. And it is unfortunately incredibly memorable. So people will tell you a tagline should be three to five words. Not true. Because you don't want a tagline. You want a brand promise, right? So don't be thinking that, well, I need three to five words. Liberty Mutual violated that rule. So they really focus on how they're different in their, in their language. And they communicate that value directly to the mind of their ideal buyer. So what you want to think about is, one, what do you consistently deliver to your audience? What can you stand behind and, and stand up for that makes a difference in the mind of your buyers? What kind of vibe are you trying to create? I actually came up with a, a, a promise, a brand promise for one of my employers. I worked for a casino hotel, worked for Showboat in Atlantic City in the 1990s. And our theme, our physical environment was decorated like old New Orleans. So like the French Quarter. So in I had to come up with a, a, a sort of tagline, but now I understand as a brand promise uh, for an event and it was going to be held around Mardi Gras. So I said, yes, but every day is Mardi Gras at Showboat. And we're like, that's awesome. It stuck. Did I get anything for it? No, but that, that, that statement every day is Mardi Gras at Showboat was used in some variation for the next 20 years because when you arrived at that property, you were immersed in an environment that conveyed the French Quarter, conveyed the atmosphere of Mardi Gras. And, you know, where you suspended and any worries and you were in this carefree kind of environment. So this is all part of what you're trying to convey with a great brand promise. So you're thinking about what what can you, what do you deliver consistently and reliable? What re reliably, what can your buyers count on you for? What matters most to your buyers? What can you say that other people are not saying, but is still true? What conveys a critical difference to your audience? In the, in the minds of Liberty Mutual and their clients, the difference is a dollar and cents, cents one. Unfortunately, insurance has reduced itself to competing on price a lot of times. So Liberty Mutual makes no bones about, we customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. The general, another low cost uh, provider, they have a slightly different angle that they approach this at. And Geico has another very famous brand promise. 15 minutes will save you 15% on car insurance. It's, it's, it just tells you exactly what you can expect. So rather than trying to come up with something that is super cute, super clever, and is only three to five words, forget that. What you really want to think about is what do you consistently deliver? And one of the scary parts about coming up with a clear, strong brand promise is it means you have to put your plant your flag in the ground. And too often, business is actually afraid to do that. You are going to repel people. And that's exactly what you should do. You should attract as much as you repel. I'm never going to buy insurance from Liberty Mutual 
because you only customize your car insurance and, and pay for what you need. That to me says they are selling to people who want the bare minimum of insurance. I was in a car accident. The bare minimum did not cover me. And the person who hit me, who was at fault, only had the legal minimum of insurance. My care was hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I had to, I had to sue my own insurance. So I'm never gone with Liberty Mutual, but they're not talking to me, right? They're talking to a different audience and, and they're okay with being polarizing. So you want to really think about that as well. So let's wrap this up. You are working hard to differentiate yourself and stand out from the sea of other people who say they do what you do, other businesses who say they do what you do. You're looking at all of these different components in marketing to try to visually distinguish yourself and verbally distinguish yourself. One of the great pieces to do that is in using a people or you know their businesses who use taglines i instead of a tagline i believe a brand promise is much more powerful and you want to consider what can you deliver on a consistent basis to your ideal audience that they value and appreciate what can you say that others in your industry are not saying but is still true and how can you word that in a way that really does convey the power of what you're delivering, right? And don't get caught up in has to be three to five words. All right. So I hope that has been helpful. If you would like uh, the show notes from this episode, be sure to uh, let me know and I'll tell you how you can get them. I share them in my free Facebook group and I'll share information on that. Although I might be moving them more on that later. And, uh, Stay tuned because I will continue to talk about how to make sure your message is very powerful in the next several videos. So be sure to make sure you want to stay tuned, follow, get alerts for when I go live. I go live on Tuesdays here on Facebook and uh, and on uh, I put this on YouTube as well. And that's it for now. Have a great evening. This has been Winnie Anderson. I'm a brand and content strategist helping service businesses sell their services faster and easier by helping their clients decide to buy. All right, bye for now.